Johnny a veteran in the game trying to get a read? I, honestly, Johnny vibes yeah, his plate yeah, above yeah, the yeah, today. He's just got in like really yeah, crappy yeah. spots. His yeah, accuracy, the show, like was anime very anime high. Anime. Welcome to episode number 14 of the vlog. This is an episode that I know a lot of my poker enthusiasts are really going to love because you can see all of my whole cards. You can see my opponent's whole cards. It's an episode from Live at the Bike. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, you already know what happened, likely. But for those of you that don't know, I'm gonna save the results for the end of the session, and I'm gonna make it a little bit more interesting because I'm gonna conceal my opponent's whole cards, and I'm gonna limit the chatter of Wayne and Wheezy, who were the commentators for this. They were hating on me a little bit, but you know what, it's okay. All positive vibes in this vlog. I don't think they were ready for all the Johnny Vibes fans that were gonna be in the chat. They were a little bit taken back by it, so, they were teasing me a little bit, but it's all good. I met the guys after the show. Nice guys. Shout out to Weezy and Wayne. The reason why I want to conceal the whole cards is because I think that it'll add a level of interactiveness to the episode so that you guys can kind of see where I was at and what I was thinking and my thought process on everything. Before we get into today's episode, I want to answer a question that I've been getting in the comments on some of my vlogs. People are asking why. Why am I making these videos? Why am I showing people my cards? Why am I giving away all this information for free? To give you guys an example, one episode probably takes me 10 hours of editing because as you guys know, these are highly produced. Factor in this is episode number 14. That's probably 140 hours that I've spent, you know, putting these episodes together. And I've probably made back through the Google AdSense and the advertisements on my videos maybe $40 total. So as you can see, it doesn't really add up. It's also taking time away from the tables for me because over that 140 hours that I spent on the vlog, I probably played around the same amount, around 140 hours, splitting my time equally. And over that 140 hours, I made over $100 an hour. So if you add it up, it doesn't really make sense. I get that, but if you guys noticed in an earlier episode, I don't think about things in terms of what it's gonna make me because if I did that, I would drive myself insane. I wouldn't spend any time with Olga. I wouldn't spend any time with my family. I wouldn't spend time traveling. There's just so many aspects that are adding value to my life by doing this vlog. And another thing is, is I actually just really love helping people. So many people have been reaching out to me for hand history advice and help and actually a ton of you have reached out for coaching. For you strategy nerds and for you people that are really interested in improving your poker game, stick around to the end of the episode because I have a special gift for everyone who has been a loyal vlog watcher as a way to say thank you because my channel has really exploded faster than I ever thought it would. So as a gift to everyone, stick around to the end of the episode. Before I go any further, I just wanna shout out the graphics guy, Patrick Curran. He did a really good job because there was straddling from every position, every different kinds of amounts. So it was really difficult, I know, for him to keep up with the graphics. A lot of ones and twos, I don't know. All right, your Hype call. Hype it up. Oh. I don't, I, no, it's it's your call, Wayne. Okay, well, we I'm got a crazy turn. hand, a lot of hands in here. Yep. Um, under the gun, Mr. Clean is going to raise it up. Under the gun plus two, raise right. up with King Jack off. Um, smooth call by Eight, Johnny Vibes 20. in the hijack. Uh, LG okay, calls in the cutoff. Okay. AA, three bets from the under the gun limper. Now limp re raises for a really large amount and it folds back to me. And pocket nines in this situation is mostly a bluff catcher. I actually considered calling here and waiting for the flop and waiting for a C bet. Any kind of board texture that I liked, I was thinking about jamming over the top of the C bet. But like I said, early on in the session, getting my feet wet, I decide that whatever hand he's doing this with either has really great equity against my hand or has my hand completely dead. So didn't really want to start off down 2,500 right off the bat in a marginal spot. So decided to let this one go. Like It looks like he's not happy with the situation, but a lot of times when people are not happy with the situation, then they go over the top and you're like, oh, nice Hollywood. I gotta see the flop. I have eight, eight, three. Ace King takes it down. I had eight, three. Yeah, Johnny's gonna let that one go just based on the raise size alone. I think uh, you're you're gonna be more likely dom in, in a dominated situation. Anybody have pocket sevens? Uh, nines are just at that marginal point where 
Yeah. Um, you probably need to let Two, three. go. Attack. And he did, no, so I, I like to play. Good, good, uh, full yeah. Johnny. Oh, shit. Um, not results oriented because we know ultimately he was just flipping. Yeah. But well, mostly, uh, I mean, you're basically bluff catching, so you're going to have to play for stacks with pocket nines. Right, right, which you might not want to do uh, your fourth hand of the night. A couple hands later, I'm dealt 9 7 suited in the blind, and there are a couple limps in late position. Harry makes it 45 out of the small blind. I have position on Harry. Here's one of the things I know a little bit about Harry from previous episodes. He's played with my brother. I know he's a very splashy player. And I didn't really have a strategy going into the session, but when I saw that Harry was on my immediate right and I knew how loose he was, I made an adjustment in game to kind of not really pick on him a little bit, but just isolate him a little bit. And with hands that I wanted to play, knowing that he was going to call a lot pre-flop and knowing that I was going to have position on him the entire time. Harry raises ace nine of diamonds from the small blind wow. after a couple limpers. Johnny vibes in the big blind. Looks like he's going to call. No, he three bets. He's not having it. LG in the straddle. Ace jack off. He might just ship it. <laughs> Chat, put one if you think Johnny vibes is going to pull this off. Press zero if you think he might lose. So LG ended up calling a shack off, and he has the best hand and the highest equity. I guess he needs some yellows too. Who said he needed yellows? I think he needs some yolos. <laughs> well, that's that fucking thing your hand. Seeing yeah, a lot of zeros danger. here. Yeah, I think it's three way to the flop. That's, what do we want? We want ace nine seven. <laughs> really? Ace nine seven. Would be great. Oh, sorry. Uh, king king two is yeah. close. Check. Johnny vibes are surely gonna see that. <laughs> Will it work? Do, is this a good board texture to work. be see betting on? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see about anything and just hope to take it down when you have no showdown value like this and hope to backdoor into something. <laughs> but um, this is one of the boards you definitely have a higher take it down rate. With because it's unlikely that your opponent has a two and unlikely that they have a king. It's, if they, it's, un, it's less likely, but if they do, you'll hear from them right away. I think this might actually have been the next hand. I looked down at 4-3 suited, folds to me on the button. Go ahead and raise it up. The small blind defends, and we are heads up. Johnny vibes with the position raise. Four through his spades. LG calls. This board texture is better for my range than it is his range, and I just expect him to be folding a lot. When he makes the call and I don't turn a spade, I'm pretty much done with this hand because anything that he's going to be calling with is going to have me destroyed. River comes out, doesn't improve our hand at all. And when he leads, this is obviously a folding situation. Anything that he would be calling the flop with would have us beat. And a raise doesn't make too much sense on this river. So we go ahead and let this one go. I actually didn't follow along with what was going on. So I didn't know that he was calling this wide and playing this poorly at the beginning. Because obviously calling with pocket twos on this flop is not something that I would recommend, especially against an aggressive player on the button. And a hand that's just absolutely ho has horrible equity against any two cards. It even doesn't even have good equity against 4-3. So don't learn from this guy and be results oriented. Fold the pocket deuces when the board comes out as such. Another side note from this hand is that LG, the guy on my left, after I folded, he said, good fold, I had an ace. And you know what? I didn't take too much dog into it. I figured he was telling the truth because we are on a live stream, so I could find out 15 minutes later if he was lying or not. It's really interesting that he would lie to me. I don't really care, but it just goes to show that you should never really believe anything that anyone says at a poker table. Anyways, I figure out that he's playing pretty loose, and a couple hands later, I limp into his big blind or straddle with jack-10 suited. We end up making a jack-high flush on the turn, and against players that are super loose, I'm just going to bet because I want to put them in a position where they're going to make a mistake and call with hands that they shouldn't have. He lets this one go pretty quickly, and we win a really small pot here. Harry makes it 40 in the hijack. Hang queen offsuit. 
John in the cutoff, assuredly going to play a queen jack of spades. Just call. LG dominates his spades with ace nine of spades. Five way. Poker's not dead. Captain Key, 10 9 off. Mr. Queen, 6 5 of clubs. There can be some action boards here. On this board texture, when I'm facing a C bet, this is definitely a hand that I can make the call with here. It's actually a hand that I could be raising here because I do have two overs and I do have two different back doors. But given that there's LG behind me and other players behind me in a very loose game, I decide to make the fold here. This turns out to be an excellent fold results oriented because LG ended up calling with two back doors, one of which was better than mine, one of which blocked my straight, and he ended up making the ace high flush. So results oriented, we saved a lot of money by playing well in the flop here. Harry straddles on the button, so I'm first to act in the small blind. I look down at pocket deuces, limp in here to the straddle, and a couple more limpers. Need to kill before the show. I'm trying to needle you. <laughs> pocket twos for Johnny. Uh, <sighs> Or as We've we call a lot of live of the bike calls it Tupac. <laughs> We've got a lot of Johnny Vibe fans. And really? Yeah. Are and they women or men? Right? <laughs> uh, seems to be 99% uh, dudes. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Because uh, yeah, the ladies love him. Ladies love cool. Jay, Johnny. But they were upset that he, you know, he showed up a little late. But you know, there is a monsoon happening right now in Los Angeles, so we have to give him a break. Yeah, he survived it. He actually swam here from San Diego. Is it top <laughs> and that's an upstream swim. Is that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's a typhoon. That's Shout why out. he just started a website called Upstream Poker. <laughs> On this flop, I don't see any need for betting. We are only going to get called by better, so we check it and basically give up on this hand. On the deuce here, we now make a full house. We are obviously loving our hand. So I'm going to go ahead and lead out into the field against players who, like I said, this is a very loose game. So I'm, I'm expecting to get called by anybody that has any peace. When Francisco makes the call, I, I'm obviously really loving the situation because I virtually can't be beat here. He can't have aces. He can't have queens because, he, first of all, he overlimped. And second of all, he didn't bet the flop. So there's no possible way that he could have me beat at this point. On the off chance, he maybe has like deuce five suited would be the only way he could have me beat. When the river comes in ace, this is a great card for us because Francisco is the type of player that would have a hand like ace three here or ace four here or possibly three four i size a good amount on the three quarter pot size and make it 160. when he thinks about it and raises me to i think it was 1100 dollars. i've run terrible on previous episodes of live at the bike so i'm this is in the back of my mind but at the same time because of combinations of value that he can have there's maybe deuce five suited and he could be valuing worse, something like three, four. Although I don't think that he would be valuing worse. It is a possibility. I think that it's more likely that he has deuce five or ace five or a complete bluff, but I'm not sure what bluffs he has on this river in a limped pot. With that said, I didn't come here to fold a full house in my first two orbits. Pay attention to how I react when I see the ace five suited. Do you guys see the semblance of anything negative or anything positive by me folding here? Take notes on this because this is how you should act when someone hits a virtual two outer on you to get paid. Obviously he could have hit a queen or could have hit a five, but on those cards, I'm not paying off $1,100. The only card I'm paying off $1,100 is the ace. So in effect, it's a two outer. Don't get all pissed off. Don't be a baby about it. Just handle it, move on to the next hand, and don't make the game uncomfortable for other people. It's just a part of poker, and it's something that's going to happen to you a lot, so you might as well get used to it sooner than later. Running pure. you got to give Johnny credit for, you know, he didn't insta-call. He uh, It was almost a crying call by his body language. He knew that Francisco very well could have the hands that beat him there. The very next shuffle, I look down at King-9 offsuit, there is a limp, a couple limps, and Harry raises it up. And like I said, my strategy earlier on was to isolate Harry and play pots with Harry in position. We go ahead and do that and three bet this hand. Francisco actually limp, limps for 10 and then calls 200. So already warning bells are going off in my mind. 
I'm putting Francisco on a fairly good range here. Harry also makes the call and we go three ways to the flop. Not worried anymore. We flop three nines and we have a great kicker. When it checks to me, I put in a C bet. Francisco calls. Still a little bit worried about his hand, but now that I have three nines, I'm not worried about it at all. Harry now thinks about it for a while and raises the flop. We have three nines, never folding against Harry. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the trap and make the call here, leaving myself with around $2,000 left. Right. So Johnny just calls and Francisco is thinking about what to do. Francisco might just jam here, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I expect that from Francisco. When it goes three ways, he's not, the type, to, he's not the type to just call and evaluate. He's just going to get it in right away. And uh, Johnny is not going to snap call. Now Francisco decides to jam all in. And because of the action, after Harry folds, I know that there's no possible way that this can be a bluff three ways on the flop with the action that was in front of Francisco. This is always a nine or better. I think about this for a little while and I start adding the combinations of hands that he have. I am factoring in that he limped and called 200, so Jax is definitely in his range. But given that there is 8-9, 9-10, 9-9, 7-9, -9, way more combinations of those hands than pocket jacks, jack-9, and ace-9, I decide that with the money I already have in here, it's a call that I have to make after about a minute of deliberation. It was a, it's a little bit of a nit roll here, but at the same time, I just wanted to be sure. I wanted to count the combos in my head, and it's never a bad idea to take a minute on a big decision like this. I go end up I end up making the call, and he does in fact have a nine like we thought, but we have him out kicked, and we are only going to be running it once in these situations. I just want to set the precedent that I'm only going to be running it once. So we run it once. I hold for a really nice pot. We're now up over $6,000. I think we have about 6,500 up in front of us at this point. So. There goes Johnny Vibes winning a 7K pot with uh, with trips over trips. Nice spot for him. Money back. In this next hand, it starts with a straddle and a raise to 200 from early position from AA. Francisco makes the call and Harry makes the call. And I look down at pocket eights in the blinds. I look at... AA stack and I realize that he only has around $1,200 total. I decide that this is a spot that I want to get all in with AA because I think I'm ahead of his range. I'm not too worried about Francisco because Francisco has proven that he calls really wide preflops. So I think I have Francisco smashed as well. AA pops here. it up with pocket twos. That is why twos are so bad. <laughs> Johnny's going to three bet with eights. I think he just wake up with a pair. He's got chirping oh. chips now. Johnny only bought in for 3000 He now has 6000 making all his fans in the YouTube chat very happy. <coughs> Francisco is <coughs> reaching for chips. Hi. When AA folds and now Francisco calls and Harry calls, I'm going to proceed cautiously and wait for the board, see what the board texture comes out, and go from there because... Pocket 8s doesn't really play very well multi-weight. I'm going to need a pretty specific flop, especially against Francisco and Harry, who are very, very sticky players. What do you think about this just call here from Francisco? Um, we get to see the cards, so it's so easy that Johnny's been, like, three betting pretty light. Uh, this is what, because 8s are hard to play post off this is why I actually don't like three betting with uh, these kind of, I mix it up, obviously, sometimes, but... Uh, right. Like, I don't like 3-betting with the mid or low pocket pairs that much. Harry just jams it with his open-ended straight draw and his backdoor 10-high diamond draw. Francisco with ace-king. The only thing he's going to fold. Oh, well, actually, Johnny's Johnny next. He's, yeah, Johnny can't call. Uh, I predict that they run it twice and chop. I predict they run it twice and Francisco wins both. Oh, but they're going to run it once. Wow. Shout out to Ronald once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this. Hold on, hold on, yeah. Yeah, one time. Yeah, go one time. Next hand is really interesting because there's a straddle for $50. And when there's a straddle for $50, it's almost like it's a raised pot preflop. I play these a little bit differently. I don't think of limps as a traditional limp. I like to not three bet out of the small blind and take a flop here. Since I am treating Francisco's limp as basically a raise. Johnny vibe from the small blind. Like King Jack of Diamonds. Yeah. 
you know, 10 says we is what stakes you play. I play two five and five five. And I occasionally five ten. Yeah, I almost fall in the before the flop. Four players. When we flop top pair and a straight flush draw, I decide to lead out here because, like I said, when there are loose players behind me, I just want to put money in the pot when I have a very high value hand. So we bet the flop when we get a, we get some action behind us. The turn comes not great for us, and because the players are so loose, I decide to check here because I might not have the best hand anymore. And I, even though I can bet for value, I will almost be semi-bluffing in this spot because of the action that I got behind me. When it checks through and I rip her astray, I do like my hand, but I think that the better option here is to bluff catch. And when I check and it checks through Francisco and he bets, we're going to be bluff catching here a lot, but he uses a very polarized sizing. And it sends me deep into the tank. Thinking about what he has here, I decide that for this sizing, it's just not worth it. I think that he has a value hand here because he overcalled on the flop. He doesn't have air. So what could he have here that I am beating with a straight? Because Johnny Vibes can't beat Ace Jack either. Can't beat a flush, can't beat Ace Jack, can't beat a full house. Wow, Johnny Vibes folds. Great fold, Johnny. Ace Queen beats. LG is queen nine. And LG is going to lay it down. Good fold. Johnny vibes. Raising on the button. 2-150. Um, a is going to call. Jack eight of diamonds. Captain key three bets. Uh, with pocket tens. We saw queen deuce get folded. Sorry. Johnny it wants to go to Brazil. looks like yeah you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't see his cards yeah. or what he's, uh, he's probably folding but you never know guys are chip it's LATB yeah. <laughs> pocket tens takes it down I did believe it or not how did I get on the river there 300 So Johnny vibes raise to 300. Looks like I think there's 100 straddle or 50 straddle. Can't see. LG calls ace two spades. Game's wild. Francisco with 90 to diamonds. He calls to Armenian Mike ace two soft. Probably upset. Folds. Mr. Clean pocket eights shipping it. Yeah, Mr. Clean's stack has has fallen below the 50% threshold, and he's like, let's get it all in. I want to run it against some overcards. Yeah. Johnny's not, most likely not folding. Unless one of these guys makes a play and back raises. I mean, it's pretty nitty if Johnny folds here. I'd actually like to see a protection raise. And he does it. Go. Very good. Very good, Johnny. Very nice. Very like. nice. I agree with your play. Like. Ace what? I call this guy. Say it. Ace ten of spades. Nine. Whoa. Whoa. Hard draw. I had four. Whoa, five. wheel draw. Nine, queen. Nine, four, oh. Johnny. Queen. Johnny Rockets gets there. Wow. Oh. Mr. Clean gets the bad news. Oh, what a flop. Man, I had four five. And he's out, just like that. Oh, Mr. Clean. Oh, my God, so sick. I agree. It's always the worst when it's right on the river. <laughs> so I brought uh, a lot of upswing guys to... Is that a straddle or a raise? It's a straddle. Straddle from the button now we're here. I said go ahead. 
Go ahead. Right, Let's travel from UTG. <laughs> and Armenian Mike's going to call the, or raise to 50. Johnny Vibes calling the small blind 45 with a queen jack of hearts. AA with the Baccarat 6 3. He's going to call in the straddle. Looks like Armenian Mike flops a gut shot. But his jack will be no good. Queen jack high currently the best. Gone Armenian good, Mike turns man. the nut straight. Wait to me? Yeah. It's gonna bet. Over bet. Johnny Vibes with open ended. It's gonna fold out of position. In this last hand, I look down at the 7 4 suited after it folds to me in late position. We go ahead and raise it up. As you guys can tell, my ranges get a little bit wider when the stacks are deep and we are in later position. Johnny Vibes hijack, raising it to 50. Matt. Ryan Feldman calling on the button. A6 20. of diamonds. I actually prefer three betting in that spot, but calling is totally fine. Just don't fold. <laughs> Francisco calls in the big Check blind. Check blind. Mike Pay the man his money. All spades. Who's ahead? Ryan's ahead. When we flop top pair, I actually think I'm going to be ahead a lot here, especially when there's three spades on the board. I want to bet a little bit on the larger side to charge over cards, to charge spades. And so I bet around three quarter pot. It folds to me and we take down the last hand of the session. It was actually the very last hand. Yeah. Gonna take it. We're Good job, Johnny. Uh, honestly, Johnny Vibes has played above the ring today. He's just got in like really crappy spots. Harry, keep in mind if you win a hand. His next accuracy hand, the show like was very high. high. I want you guys to take a look at this chart that they provided at the end of the show here that talks about the VPIP, voluntary put money in the pot, and the PFR, the percent preflop raise percentage and notice that I was near the bottom on voluntarily putting money in the flop and I was at the top on pre-flop raise and even though these numbers are a little bit off the graphics were a little bit tough to keep up with this illustrates what good poker is in general in general you want to have your PFR and your VPIP not very far apart and if your VPIP is really high and your PFR is really low that's a recipe for losing poker in general. For you strategy nerds, for you people that have been reaching out to me about coaching, I've just been putting everyone off because I didn't really know what to do. I got a gift for you guys. I created a Facebook group just for my vlog watchers, for you guys to, a community of people for you guys to post hand histories and have access to me for free, everything's for free. I'll explain everything within the Facebook group, but if you're interested on in taking your poker game to the next level, there's gonna be a link in the comments. I'll highlight the comment. I'll probably put a link in the notes as well. The vlog is going international. We're gonna be going to Hong Kong, Macau, Singapore, Russia, Korea, Japan, just to name a few for this summer. Obviously the World Series of Poker is in the mix, so make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you like this vlog. If you liked all the strategy thank you so much for being in my corner you guys i'm off to the midwest like i said i'll be seeing a lot of you guys on tuesday at the horseshoe and hammond tuesday night for the rest of you i'll be seeing you in episode number 15 thank you guys what's your nice name to meet you bro aaron oh, nice to meet you, i'm a huge fan bro hey do you mind signing mine okay. so, thanks bro my first signing yes sir. i appreciate it bro ryan so much, chill aaron's here he wants to talk to me. YouTube You're interrupting things. Let me have my moment. This is the first time this has ever happened to me. Chill out for a second. I'll answer your questions after I get done with Aaron. Come on, man. Chill.